inspiring story of how a shipping giant can befriend a forest may seem like the stuff of fairy tales. But if you take away the faces on the trees, take away the pixie dust, take away the singing animals, and the storybook narrator, you're left with more electric trucks, more recycled shipping materials, and a growing number of lorry mission planes, which still makes for a pretty enchanted tale. Oops, forgot one. Sustainable solutions. FedEx. Solutions that matter. I stepped on the machine, and it showed me the pressure points on my feet and exactly where I needed more support. Then, I got my number. My tired, achy feet affected my whole life until I found my number. I tried the free Dr. Schultz Foot Mapping Center. In two minutes, I got my foot map and custom number. I'm a 440. That matched up to the Dr. Schultz custom foot orthotic inserts with the right support and cushioning I need. I am a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Find your closest foot mapping center at drshoals.com. You love the taste of 2% milk, but think about your heart. 2% has over half the saturated fat of whole milk. Want to cut back on fat and not compromise on taste? Try Smart Balance Fat-Free Milk. It's what you'd expect from the folks at Smart Balance. Now, save up to 65%. Call 1-800-SANDALS. This is an RC robotic claw. A high school science teacher made me what I am today. Our science teacher helped us build it. Now, I'm a geologist at Chevron, and I get to help science teachers. It has four servo motors and a wireless microcontroller. Over the last three years, we've put nearly $100 million into American education. That's thousands of kids learning to love science. That's pretty cool. Mid-grade dark roast forest fresh, full tank brain freeze keg donuts, rolling hot dogs, bag of ice, antifreeze, wash and dry. Diesel self-serve fix-a-flat, jumper cables, 5% cash back. Right now, get 5% cash back at gas stations. It pays to discover. will close in New Hampshire at 8 o'clock Eastern, but a large number of polls across the state closed earlier at 7 p.m., about 40 minutes ago. Right now, with 4% of the vote in, Mitt Romney in the lead with 37% of the vote, Ron Paul with 24% of the vote. In second place, John Huntsman at 14%, Newt Gingrich in fourth place at 12%, Rick Santorum polling fifth right now with 10% and Rick Perry uh, straggling at 1%. Right now, let's go back to Chris Matthews, who's in Manchester, New Hampshire. <clears throat> Thank you, Rachel. We're back with uh, Michael Steele and, of course, Gene Robinson, both gentlemen up here with me most of the last week right now. Thank you for joining us. You know, I think uh, this whole question, I want to ask you as a Republican, mm -hmm. uh, the way Republicans see what we've been talking about and hear it differently. Many of our progressive viewers may look at things differently. Oh, yeah. uh, when they hear, when your people, uh, Republicans, hear that somebody says something like, I like the ability to be able to fire people, I like the ability to be able to fire, do they hear something different than, say, a Democrat hears? Well, it depends on the context of what you're talking about. And when you're well, looking, well, it, you know. It, firing insurance companies, firing other people, firing doctors. Right. In firing other words, you deal it's, with. it's part of the ongoing management of any uh, business concern that, yeah, you have to make hard decisions and make hard choices, which a lot of conservatives around the country argue the government has not made over the last 10, 15, 20 or so years. Certainly, you look at the fact that the U.S. Senate, uh, under the Democrat leadership, hasn't even passed a budget in over 900 days. So that. That's the kind of incompetency that people are concerned about. So when you have a leader, whether it's the CEO of a company or a political leader, says, I'm willing to make the hard choices, that resonates. So yeah, you know, the progressives would like to take it at the base level. You want to fire somebody and put them out of work. Republicans, conservatives see that as part of the efficiencies of the marketplace. And yeah, people lose their jobs. It's not a good thing. You don't sit around. There's not a party afterward. No one's, you know, is it having Gene, a good time. What about, what but about, you, you act like as a business concern, you would never make that decision? Right. You know, but, but well, what about the, Re the Reagan Democrats who became a big part of the base of the Republican Party? Not the country club Republican Party. But this but is not about country club Republicans. Republicans. Those Reagan I'm, Democrats no, are I'm, business owners. But, I, but I'm asking seriously, what do 
those people hear when they hear somebody they hear this, say, and that's why they're part I of, that's like why they're part of that coalition. Part. That's why they're part of that coalition, because they're part of a party that understands, then, that understands that at the base level, you've got to make some hard decisions sometimes, then why do Newt as Gingrich, opposed to putting it off. Why do Newt Gingrich and Rick Perry and others think it's a good idea to bring this to the attention of Republicans? Uh, they obviously think that at least some of the Republican Party is going to react in a different way. It's not going to not going to understand. Is, is going to think there's something wrong with this guy Romney. There's something something. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you know, is there's something problem? unfeeling well, about him. No, hey, no, but James. I'm curious. What if, uh, it, it just seems to me that there 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 are two different ways that distinct Republicans might look. I like at to a be able to right fire there. people. That may be. Look, I'm not I'm not going to argue about the way he said it. I think he could have been a little bit more articulate about the way he said How it. How should he have said it? Well, make I the think, point you no, wanted you, to make. You made the point that you know you have to make tough choices in business, in life, in politics. This government has not made those tough choices. They have not focused on on the employment situation as they said they would. They've not uh, focused sure. on you know that's how you begin to frame it. But when you put it the way he put it, yeah, it's easy to pick that, throw a dart at, and go there you go. See, that's how they are. That's not how we are. We are we are small business owners. We are employees. We are employers. Yes, and but that's the reality. It's a difference between saying I like to decide which gas station to stop at. I like to be able to decide which toothpaste to buy, which which bread to buy. That's different than saying I like being able to decide when to fire somebody. Again, again, I understand. <laughs> but, but, but Chris, you understand in the context what he's saying. That's about I like to be able to control the decisions okay. that that impact I, me. Okay. I, you know what you're so, talking. You know what Jane's talking about. I think I know you're the columnist. You're the man with well, words. But you're talking about cloth coat Republicans versus mink coat Republicans. Yeah, well, yeah, the cloth coat Republican, mm -hmm. the guy who may be a small business owner or maybe just a worker, a regular guy, right. uh, he hears firing, and that's bad. No, he doesn't because he's a small business owner. He has to make that okay. choice at some point. Okay, we got to go back to Rachel. This is going to be an argument which shall continue <laughs> through it, the evening, I'm sure. I got to say, if if you are a small bone, a small business owner who has to make a decision to fire somebody, if as a small business owner you like the way that feels to fire somebody, I don't care if you're Ann Rand. That that's still a creepy thing that we've just <laughs> well, learned that's about. That's not yeah. creepy, Rachel. Think <laughs> you're focusing on the word like, and, yeah. the, and the point is, he's, he's, not, he's not going. At, his home word. With balloons and celebrate. Again, I wouldn't have put it that way. What he's saying is that's the control he likes to have as a business owner and as an individual to make those kinds of decisions. So if you're not getting the job done, I want to be able to do something about it. I, I, I just as opposed to what our government has done, what he, government does is he, just let it build into something more yeah. mammoth and uncontrollable till we get to this point where we have fifteen trillion dollars worth of debt. And, and, because and, well, people have not with, paid attention. If that like is it. true, that means he is and locking up the like votes. Like he is locking up the votes of the handful of people in America who after the Wall Street crash were really psyched that those AIG people were still going to get their bonuses. If there were five people in America who believed that, Mitt Romney has now locked up their vote in New Hampshire with this I love firing people. Uh, uh, Rachel, who was the guy that said it? I think it was the New York Athletic Club of old who said, I like the working man. I like to see him work. Uh, right. <laughs> so, you know, in all seriousness, though, though Chris, what, the, what the, uh, the reason that we're talking about this at all isn't just that Mitt Romney made this gaffe. It's that it's a gaffe that tends to confirm either an image or a caricature of Mitt Romney. With that. I would agree with that. That has th that. That, that's already in, that's in the it's, consciousness. That's just and why it's so it's inarticulate. It, it goes along with the whole vulture capitalism charge against <laughs> Romney. It, it's there. Yeah, it it's goes there. along with the vulture the capitalism. Vulture capitalism. <laughs> oh, Lord, All right, let, let me bring into this discussion <laughs> NBC's <laughs> Andrea Mitchell, uh, who is also with us from Manchester. And Andrea has been looking into the super PACs, the super PACs working sort of on behalf of the Mitt Romney campaign were part of what destroyed Newt Gingrich upon him surging in Iowa. We are seeing a sort of reverse of that promise from Super PAC supporting Newt Gingrich toward Mitt Romney looking ahead in South Carolina. Andrea? And in fact, one of the things, Rachel, that you see in the exit polls is that when voters were asked, who do you think ran the most unfair campaign? That was pretty well evenly divided in the exit polls between Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich. So people are paying attention to this whole argument about the negativity of the super PACs. But the real uh, interesting thing coming out of here, whoever comes in second or third uh, shows a good showing. 
the importance of that is not just bragging rights, because the people who are going to be watching this are the money people, the key supporters who are putting money into those super PACs for money to be put up for South Carolina and, most importantly, for Florida. And, Rachel, the people watching are going to be John Huntsman's father, the billionaire, self-made man who put up the money for his super PAC. So far, John Huntsman's super PAC has only spent $50,000 pledged to South Carolina. So it's the, the question is, how well is he going to do tonight, and is his father going to keep bankrolling him going forward? The other person is Newt Gingrich. Uh, Sheldon Adelson from Nevada, the casino, the uh, millionaire, billionaire, whatever, uh, casino owner, big mogul there, has pledged $5 million, but so far they've only put up $1.6 million on ad buys in South Carolina. Romney's going to have all the money he wants, but Newt Gingrich has to see whether Shelly, Sheldon Adelson is one keep bankrolling them and see whether they're going to put any money up in Florida. So far, none of them have, except Mitt Romney. And Rick Santorum only has $164,000 on the boards in South Carolina. Mm. As I say, nothing for Florida. Florida is really expensive. And the big question is going to be who is going to have enough of a showing tonight, second or third place winners, if they're closely tied or closely uh, bunched up, to say to their financial supporters, stay with us. Rachel? Andrea, let me let me ask you. Obviously, we're all looking at second, third, and fourth place finishers tonight to look at right. who can put together enough of a campaign broadly defined to capitalize on a strong finish like that in New Hampshire. And obviously, part of that is whether or not they've got campaign staffers, and we can look at that in the way we always traditionally have. But because the super PACs can be funded by just one person, whether or not he's somebody's dad, exactly. is there anybody? Is there any predictability? To to whether or not a candidate will be able to lock up dark money. Is it, is it just a quirk of individual billionaires who's going to be able to move forward well, with super PAC funding? It's a quirk, but these billionaires made their money by being smart about money. And even John Huntsman's father might not want to keep putting money in if he believes that this is not going anywhere. So that's another reason why Huntsman really needs a good showing, even within that family. His father has not put that much money on the table, especially not, you know, going forward in South Carolina. This was a one-state campaign, and he has everything banked and bet on this. That is exactly the game changer, though, Rachel. These super PACs raise money without any disclosure in real near time. There's no transparency. They can raise unlimited amounts of money. This is the real uh, impact of that uh, Citizens United Supreme Court decision. This is the first presidential campaign we're seeing it. And the super PACs have changed the way everyone is doing business in this campaign. Thank you, Andrea Mitchell. I appreciate that. It is amazing exactly. when you think about if a billionaire were truly motivated here, somebody like Sheldon Adelson is the eighth richest man in the world. Yeah, he's talking about $5 million, maybe $20, $25 million. What if he decided to drop hundreds of millions of dollars on this race? He's an older guy. What if he decided that was his priority? As a country, we are at the mercy of the quirks of individual billionaires in terms of who they decide they would like to be president. Polls will be closed at the top of the hour. We'll have the first characterization of the race in New Hampshire in just a few minutes. MSNBC's coverage of the New Hampshire primary will continue after this. There are patients who will question, why does my mouth feel drier than I remember it to be. There are more people taking more medication, so we see people suffering from dry mouth more so. We may see more cavities, bad breath, oral irritation. A dry mouth sufferer doesn't have to suffer. I would recommend biotin. The enzymes in biotin products help supplement enzymes that are naturally in saliva. Biotin helps moisten those areas that have become dry. Those that are suffering can certainly benefit from biotin. When I grow up, I want to fix up old houses. When I grow up, I want to take him on his first flight. I want to run a marathon. I'm going to own my own restaurant. When I grow up, I'm going to start a band. At AARP, we believe you're never done growing. I just want to get my car back. Discover what's next in your life. Get this free travel bag when you join at aarp.org slash join today. After years of hearing this. Sorry, Charlie. Now, with our Flavor Fresh pouch, it's time for a little thanks. Thanks, Charlie, for making lunch simple. Thanks, Charlie, for fresher tasting tuna with no mess. Thanks, Charlie, for a healthy, guilt free alternative. Vacuum sealed, easy to open. Enjoy the Flavor Fresh pouch anytime, anywhere. Tell them Charlie sent you. 
for the Starkist Flavor Fresh Pouch. Thanks, Charlie. We went from my mom's kitchen to an 8,000 square foot facility. I'm Anthony Flynn and I'm the owner of U-Bar. Millions of business owners like Anthony Flynn use Vistaprint.com to promote their business with everything from business cards to brochures to banners. I felt like they, they went around to every small business and said, how can we make this as easy as possible? And they listened. And my sister was like, this card is amazing. You actually look like a professional company now. Get 250 premium business cards for only $10 at Vistaprint.com.